presence is mighty. His presence is mighty in this place today. I just feel his power. His power permeating this place. And we thank the Lord for his goodness. So we're going to worship him because his name is greater than all names. Hallelujah.
Praise you, Lord. Amen. You know when the praises go up, the blessings go down? It says he inhabits the praises of his people. We need to really start praising the Lord. Amen. Clap your hands and, the, and raise your hands in the presence of the Lord. Because when we start surrendering ourselves to him, he begins to bring his Holy Spirit into your life and intervenes in incredible ways. So we are here to praise our Jesus. Are we ready to praise the Lord this morning, beloved? Yeah. We hear a Hallelujah. Amen. Let's praise him.
of Jesus. Man can come and go, people fail, but God never fails. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord Jesus. Say hello to somebody this morning. Welcome your neighbor. Say hi. People you don't know as well, I say hello. Meet some people. God bless. Good afternoon or morning, I should say. Thank you. 
I was going. Brother Brian runs the food pantry. If you need any or you want any, see him and he'll take care of you. Uh, children's ministry is going strong with Sheila. Thank you, Sheila. Bible study continues on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Uh, open mic night is coming up on December 7th. You want to get up here and enter? Say again? Oh, six, not seven. Not D Day. December 22nd <laughs> celebration up here on Sunday is for you people to come up here if you want to do some singing or whatever. See Pastor Sean and he'll uh, set you up. <coughs> Pastor Sean still has a YouTube following and it continues to grow, but still the more the merrier. Go to join, go online to Sean Theodore and click on subscribe. Our worship team does a great job, but week after week I get up here and ask you people to find someone else to join the team and make it extended and make it even better than it is. Uh, if you find someone like that, have them see Pastor Sean. Uh, we don't have a service collection here. We have a giving box over there on the wall. And through the donations received, the church continues to grow and serve others. If you are watching out there in computer land, you also can give by going to AbundantGraceNH.com and clicking on the donation box. After service is dismissed, two things happen. We have an altar call up here with pastor and fellowship in the back room. I leave you with this. As we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
a lot of questions and a lot of people asking me how things went, so I probably should just tell everybody real quickly. So I finished my first marathon last Sunday, and uh, it's the May 10 pace, so part of, the, uh, part of the marathon running crew now, so I guess I can say I'm a marathon runner, so it's kind of awesome to, to finish. So and a lot of people ask me, did you qualify for the Boston Marathon? So just a long story short, if you look at my splits, I was qualifying up to mile 17. I actually did my fastest mile at mile 17, so I was probably going to beat it by about 5 to 10 seconds at minimum. And then the hamstring that was injured, I knew it was hurt, the strain tore. So I got a partial tear, so it's now a grade 2. It was a grade 1, which would have been probably three weeks, and then now it's, I felt a tear, but I was able to, some military guy got beside me around mile 10, 17, saw me limping, and you know how they are, he was like starting to coach me. Come on, you got it, hoorah! <laughs> you can do it! Don't give up, don't you quit. Don't care about the pain. You got a, you got a goal, you got to reach that. You got to, he was just going on and on and on. I'm like, yes sir. <laughs> <laughs> yes sir. <laughs> but uh, yeah, 9.2 miles on a torn hamstring. Um, I definitely, I slowed down two minutes per mile and made it the rest of the way. I was slower kind of like a wounded duck, but I ended up with like right, oh, like 100 out of, 103 out of 577 runners, so I was still really good considering I got injured. So I so did it in three hours and 34 minutes, so 8, 10 pace, so it was, it was awesome considering. I was surprised I did it that fast. I said, I'm never getting in with this. <laughs> it's like, but but um, yeah, I didn't qualify, but I got one more, April. It's the last one I'm going to do. It's on the rail trail. If I can heal up in time. April 5th, it's a Saturday, I'm going to give my last shot, it'll be my last try. If I don't, if something else happens and I don't qualify, psh, that's it. If I do, I'm in. If I don't, I'm just going to say I ran two marathons and just praise God. And so I was good. So now everybody knows what happened, so now I'm, I'm good with it. So if you guys can pray. I thank the church, by the way, before we dismiss the kids, for everybody who came and supported, you know, and, you know, Georgia and Dave was up there and you had a Georgia did an awesome job. Can you give a round of applause stepping in and doing what you did? It was great. And the guys came on the day I was out and you said, I'm still coming to church and we're gonna worship and praise the Lord. And that was great. So that was a uh, good job, you all, for doing that. And uh, so the next one I have is April 5th on a Saturday, so I don't have to worry about nothing. I just go Saturday. I'll be here Sunday, who knows how I'll be, but <laughs> God is good. And uh, so we're going to dismiss the children. God bless you, kids. And I uh, hope that you have a wonderful class today. Yep, walk you guys. We have quite a crew today. So have fun, Sheila. God bless you. And um, we're going to be doing a new series. So um, we're going to be in part one of our series. And uh, we just pray that the Lord blesses. I had several in mind. And um, I came across this one, and this is the one that we're going to be doing for the next several weeks. So I just pray that it would minister to you as we get into a new series. Again, we're doing the book of Isaiah. We're in Isaiah chapter 41. So we encourage you to, um, you know, come on Wednesday night if you can and get in the Word because it's really good. There's a lot of deep truths in the Word of God that you can learn as you go. We go into it in greater specificity. And again, we have the... Um, if you want to sing on Christmas, or our service is on the 22nd of December, let me know if you want to do a special, and uh, we can incorporate that into our Christmas uh, program. It's going to be a special time to celebrate the uh, Immaculate Conception of the Lord Jesus Christ and the, the Virgin Birth and the miraculous miracles that Jesus did for us and is doing for us every day. Amen. So, so open mic, like he said. December 6th, you got talent, it's all Christmas, it's not going to be anything but Christmas, so there's no other songs that we can sing, but sing this, these Christmas songs on December 6th, we're going to have some fun for the Lord, okay, so we're going to start part number one, you guys ready for the word of God today? Yeah, yeah. Right, let's get started, Lord, thank you today for the power of the worship, thank you for this wonderful group of people who are here today, who love you, Lord, who come to church and praise you, Lord. I pray that you would bless this message. I pray that you encourage those who hear it, those who are out this week. I pray you heal them, bless them, 
For those who are here, those who are watching on live stream, I pray that you would bless them. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says that we're more than conquerors through him that loved us, amen? So as believers, you may go through some real tough situations. You know, you're going to go through a lot of setbacks. You're going to go through a lot of things that didn't go the way you planned it. When you try something and it doesn't work, it may be discouraging to you. But the Bible says not, you're not just a conqueror. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror. Can someone say amen? That means that you are more than able to overcome these setbacks that come your way. Now, we can have so many different setbacks in our lives. We invest in certain things, and we think it's going to work out, and then it doesn't work out as good as we hoped for at the beginning. But I'm here to tell you that there's no greater investment than in the kingdom of God. If you've invested in the Lord, God is going to bless you. He's going to bless your investments. He's going to burst them open. He's going to take it to a level which you've never even begun to even understand if you keep speaking life over these things. And don't give up because death and life are in the power of the tongue. Amen? Can someone say amen? Keep watering. Keep speaking. Don't speak negative. Don't speak what's happening. Speak what's happening in the spiritual realm. Can someone say amen? Don't speak death over your situation. You may be going through a trial of your pain and suffering. The Bible says you're more than a conqueror. That means you're going to conquer and your situation is going to conquer. Who are true overcomers today? That's the question. Because if you're a true believer, you're an overcomer. The Bible says that we can overcome any situation because it says in the word, a just man falls seven times and rises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. You know a just man falls seven times? You know, I hear a lot of people when they have endeavors and they, they stumble and fall or they try and it doesn't work the first time. You know what people say? Well, I guess that wasn't God's will because it didn't. No, just because it doesn't work the first time or the second time or the third time or the 20th time doesn't mean it ain't going to work on the 21st time. That means you've got to have some resolve. That means you've got to keep praying. You've got to keep overcoming. You've got to have faith. Faith to overcome because we are more than conquerors. We are children of God. And greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Let's start taking back what the devil has stolen from us and start declaring that I am a victor in Christ. Amen. You may have had a tough case, but you know what? You may be working on one right now. God is about ready to explode, springboard a situation that's been awful. Maybe it's dormant, but it's about ready to resurface. Maybe it's something that you've gone through that you feel an injustice. God's about ready to repay you. You've got to be an overcomer. Now, some people aren't overcomers. Christians, you know what? Christians can be true overcomers, and they, and Christians can be... Even though they're overcomers, they don't overcome. Doesn't mean you're not an overcomer, you just don't overcome. Unbelievers aren't overcomers because they're dead in their sin. I want to talk about what a true overcomer is in the scriptures today. How this applies to you. Are you a true overcomer? That's the question. That's the title of the message today in our series, More Than Conquerors. I want us to have a victor's mentality. This is why I went into this series because I believe that we've been battling things, and we've been having setbacks, frustration, waiting on God, wondering why things have happened the way they have, why you've had to invest so much time, so much energy, so much of your, you know, time into things that have not seemed to work out the way you wanted it to, and now you're wondering, where are you, Lord? I'm here to tell you, he's here for you. He's about ready to bless you. Can someone say amen? We're going to go to the book of Revelation, chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 5. I want to read a what you would call in evangelical circles a very controversial passage of scripture. It's used in, in, in uh, ministries. This is a scripture that's used, taken out of context, and erroneously applied. And I want to extrapolate from this verse so that I can take this verse, compare it to another scripture, because the Bible says that we should con uh, compare scripture with scripture. It's called the golden rule of interpretation. If you would learn that in Bible school, in hermeneutics, Bible school, you know, Sermon 1, Sermon 2, Bible studies, you know, New Testament survey. These are things that you learn. Now, how do you properly interpret this verse? Because this is a verse, like I said, that can be quite, I would say, I wouldn't say controversial, but you can draw a doctrine, which people do off this scripture, and it's been done. And I want to read this to you so you understand. How many people believe that they're going to heaven? So you have faith in that, right? 
There's people who tell you that you're a Christian and you can go to hell and not go to heaven if you don't work hard enough for Jesus. And you put yourself under the law. Now you're no longer under grace. You're under the law. And this is one verse we'll use right here that puts us under the law. Now we're no longer conquerors because we have law mentality. Let me go to the verse and let's read it. I want to read this because this is important. And I want to give you some scriptures that apply. It says, he that overcometh, the it says, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. So it says, he that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. So when you get to heaven, you get clothed with white raiment. You get this white garment because that's purity, that's holiness. When you overcome, so when you get to heaven, you get these white garments. You're like God now. It says when you get to heaven, it says you will be like him and you will see him as he is. And you have a white garment, he has a white garment. You'll be like God if you overcome. So the scripture says he that overcomes, the same shall be clothed with white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book of life. So here's the wrong interpretation of this scripture. It says you have to overcome, and if you don't, as a Christian, if you don't overcome, you will be blotted out of the book of life. That's what has been taught in a lot of churches, and they use this verse to do it. I'm going to give you a denomination. I don't go there. I don't get political. I'm none of that. I don't mention names or whoever. I'm just saying this is taught erroneously. It says if you're a Christian, he that overcomes says that you will not be blotted out of the book of life, right? Wow, I guess that's what it means, right? If you look at it, I want to explain it to you a little further, and I want to give you the right interpretation of this, so you understand this. He that overcomes, his name, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. So overcomers will not be blotted out of the book of life. That does say that, right? So what's it saying? It's saying this, first of all, you know, he says, I'm not going to blot you out of my book. It's not a threat, but an assurance that saved people's names will always be in the book of life. God's not threatening you. So I'll throw you into the fire. He's saying, I'm going to keep you, and your robes are going to be clean. So you're saying, wait a minute, though. Who is he that overcomes? It says he that overcomes is the ones that aren't going to get blotted out of the book of life. So if I don't overcome, I'm going to get thrown in hell? Nope, but there is something good I want to tell you. Here's the thing. When you're a believer, there should be fruit. You need to examine yourself. Is there fruit? Are you overcoming? Do you have fruit to say that you're saved? You know what? I don't have any conviction. I live in sin. I don't even care. I, I, I say I'm saved, but you know what? My actions don't follow it up. Look at the way I lived. You know, that's how I was when I was a young man. I was a party hardy kind of guy. I mean, I had my Mustang. I was... 17, 18, still had the same spike haircut, but a lot younger. I was 18 years old. I was a cop magnet. I mean, I mean, cops were on my white Mustang with the mag wheels, and they were saying, there he is, let's get him. That was like always speeding and listening to all kinds of bad music, partying, living the wild life. I was like, yeah, I'm saved. Yeah, I believe in God. I'm a Christian. I said I was saved. Well, I didn't have any fruit, though. I wasn't convicted about anything. Just because I say I'm saved doesn't mean I'm an overcomer. Was I an overcomer? No, I wasn't because I was only saved here. I wasn't saved here. You see the difference? Now, I want to talk about a true overcomer. I want to get to that. So you see what the scriptures say? It says, he that overcomes, I will not blot you out. You will have a role. So you say, I'm going to overcome. Now I want to straighten this out. This is why we can't just take one verse out of context to draw a doctrine and say, if you don't overcome, you're going to hell, even if you're a Christian. If you don't overcome, you've got to keep plugging in for the Lord. You've got to keep working. You've got to tithe. You've got to be in church every week. If you don't tithe, you're going to hell. If you don't serve and be in church every week, you're going to hell. If you sin too much, you're going to lose your salvation. You're gone. That's not in the Bible. But that's the verse, one of the main verses that is used to fall to for that false doctrine. Now let's go, let's go to the point that he's talking about. He says this. Now this is very important to listen to this. Now this is a very important part. It says, he that overcomes, he will not blot out. So who is, well then here's the question. Who is he that overcomes? We've got to figure that part out, right? So it says, he that overcomes, I will not blot you out. So who is it? We've got to find out. Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1. This is why you read more verses in the Bible, not take one scripture. This is what cults, they take one verse, out of context, 
teach it so they can have their own doctrine to control everybody and keep them in fear, keep them under their feet, keep them following them. That's what cults do, follow man, not God. That we're not going to follow a cult. We're going to follow the word of God, right? I don't want you following Pastor Sean. I want you to follow the word. I want you to follow Jesus. This ain't my opinion. This is God's opinion. Can someone say amen? And we're going to follow God's opinion today. What is he saying? Let's go to 1 John chapter 5 and verse 1. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone that loveth him that begat him, loveth him also that is begotten of him. Begat means conceived or brought forth. You're born. So you're born of God if you believe in him. It says, whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. So if how many people believe that Jesus is the Christ and they received him as Lord and Savior? They truly meant it in their heart. So that means you're born of God, okay? I will, we can establish that part. You're born of God. Everybody got that? So that means you're born again. You are a Christian. He's in your heart. You're saved. But you're saying, that, yeah, but it says he that overcomes, you know, I, well, we, we better overcome. You're going to get blotted out of the book. Let's keep reading. It says, by this we know that we love the children of God when we keep, when, when we love God and keep his commandments. How do we know that we are the children of God? How do we know that we love the children of God? How do we know? We, first of all, we got to love our, our brothers and sisters in Christ, right? But we also got to do this. We got to keep his commandments. What's his commandments? Love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself. Can someone say amen today? Are you a true overcomer? Then that means you got to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you're not loving me as a brother in Christ, as a pastor or whatever, you got problems with me, you're not in the will of God. If I'm not loving you, i got a problem too. I mean, I'm not in the will of God. i got to love you regardless of whether or not you make mistakes because you know what? If you're a true child of God, you're going to forgive, you're going to love, you're going to love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and your neighbor as yourself, and you're going to pray for your fellow believers. Amen? Amen? That's what it says right in Scripture, right? How do we know we're Christians? You'll know that you're a true believer by your love. Amen. This is how we know. When we love one another, when you love your brother and sister in Christ, when you hate people, that's not a good sign. If you're always hating, 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 I mean, it's okay to do it for a short period of time. As a, a Christian can have a little hatred in their heart at the beginning, but they'll get convicted and repent eventually and say, I better stop hating them. I, I got to let this go. I mean, God will work on you. That shows that you're a true believer. If you're just holding grudges and angry and never even caring and you're just hostile and apoplectic all the time at people and frustrated and always eviscerating people and whatever, smear, slander, besmirching, it's never good. But what's the scriptures say? It says we're born of God, right? And when we're born of God, we love the children of God. And we follow God's commandments. We read a scripture, we get convicted. That's how you know you're a child of God. Does the Bible convict you? Oh, I read scripture, but that doesn't do anything for me. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, check yourself. I can go out and party and I can do anything I want. I can drink, I can find women and have all kinds of intimacy with them and not be married and go and party all night. And I don't even feel bad about it, but I still got Jesus. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, bro. Got a problem, bro. You better look at yourself. I'm never convicted. Uh-oh. Oh, I feel bad after the fact. That doesn't mean anything. I felt bad I did it, but now I'm going to do it again. I'm going to keep going. No. Well, you got a conviction. That means the Holy Spirit is saying, stop doing that. That's not good. That shows you're a true believer. Now let's go to verse 3. It says, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. Now here's the love of God. A true Christian, when you get dialed in, you're a real overcomer. I mean, you could be an overcomer, not overcoming, but you're still an overcomer. You get that? I don't know if that makes sense or not. You're an overcomer, even if you're not overcoming. You say, what? I'm going to show you that in a moment. So this doesn't really, I don't know, does this really make sense here? I'm not overcoming when I'm not overcoming? What are you talking about? Well, when you get to that moment, who are you talking about, Pastor? And I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about in a moment. It's all going to come around full circle in a moment. But it says, but this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and that his commandments are not grievous. Amen. I've got to go to church today. Oh, man, not this again. I hate people. I hate this. I hate I expect God's blessing, but I'm always, ah, oh, what's in it for me? Ah, oh, 
I'm not past or even annoying you. Oh, that person, I don't want to get near him. I'll stay home. All right, I'll go just because you tell me to, Lord. I'll give because you tell me to give. And what's good? What good has this giving been doing for me? Oh, no, I'll go help my neighbor. Oh, not him again. You got to help him, Lord? Oh. No, that's great. That's do it because you want to do it for the Lord. Amen? That's a true over. That's an overcomer, right? Overcoming. When you do it and you're like, praise the Lord. Oh, my brother. Oh, he said something bad about I still love you, brother. You're my brother from another mother. Even if you're treating me wrong, you're still my brother from another mother. I love you. Even though you've been annoying, I still love you, right? You're talking to me, I'm talking to you. Hey, how you doing? So I still love you anyway. Here's the thing. We don't, we, when we serve God, we don't always feel like doing things in the flesh. We don't always feel like getting up and going to church. We don't always feel like opening the Bible. We don't always feel like doing certain things. But we can't go by feelings. we got to go by, Lord, I'm going to do it because you want me to. It says that God loves a cheerful giver. He doesn't want your money if you put it in the box and you're doing it grudgingly. You don't even give it to him. You're like, ah, all right, Lord. No, he doesn't want that. He wants you to give it cheerfully because he owns everything. He don't need your money. He owns the cattle upon a thousand hoods looking for our obedience. And when you give it, you give it out of a good heart. But I'm getting to a point here. Now I'm getting to it. So are we born of God? How many people have established that? We're born, born again and born of God equate to the same thing. It's literally equal. You know, it's totally the same. Now, when we start give, serving God and obeying him and, our, and his commandments are not grievous, our, we're on a positive trajectory into something that's going to take us into a greater blessing. Now, let's go to, go to verse 4. It says, for whatsoever is born of God. Are you born of God? How many people say they're born of God? Let's see the hands again. Anybody born of God? Okay. Overcomes the world. <laughs> Hold on. Wait a minute. I just said something. I just said something. Whosoever is what? Born of God. What do they do? Overcomes the world. Wait a minute. Didn't we read Revelation 3, 5? Says he that overcomes will not be blotted out of the book. Then who is he that overcomes? He that is born of God. A true overcomer. A true believer is born of God. And if you are a believer in Christ, you are automatically considered an overcomer. Not by what you did, but what he did on that cross. You're an overcomer because of the blood. It's not because of us. It's because of him. We're righteous. We're the righteousness of God in Christ because Jesus gave it all. He spilt his blood. He poured himself out and made you an overcomer because of his grace. Can somebody praise God? Grace makes us an overcomer. Not because of what I did. It's what he did. I was building up to this. I was building up. I had to work something before I get to this point. I had to build a, a, a foundation. So when we're in sin as believers, we're overcomers, not overcoming. When you're doing things and you're backslidden, you're an overcomer, not overcoming. When you're giving in the commandments of grievous, to his commandments are grievous to you. You're an overcomer, not overcoming. Does that make sense now? Amen. When we give to God, and we the commandments are not grievous, we're overcomers overcoming. And when we're overcomers overcoming, the Bible says he's going to give you exceedingly abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. And someone say amen today. How many people are looking for an Ephesians 3.20 blessing? You couldn't even ask for it. That's how big it will come when you begin to stay focused, not quit on God, and persevere when you get hit. When the door of the obstacle hits you, push that door open. Another one may hit you. Push that door open. Keep on going. The prize is at the end. Because Paul even said, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I look and press toward the mark. That's Jesus Christ. And his commandments will not be grievous. His commandments will not be grievous. I'm going to praise God. I am an overcomer because I'm born again. And I can't go to hell. My name will never be blotted out. The Bible says he that overcomes will not be blotted out. So that means if you're a true Christian, you cannot go to hell. And anyone who says otherwise is a, it's a devil's lie. By 
because now you're under the law. You can believe that, but you're going to work for Jesus. I'll worship Jesus while you keep working. You can work, I'll worship. You can have religion, I'll have a relationship. That's the difference. I know I'm going to heaven. I may not be perfect. I may make it, because if you had that mentality that I have to overcome, what level do you have to overcome? When is too sinful too sinful? Does it say it in the Bible? No, because it's not there, because it doesn't exist. So how many sins do I got to commit to, for me to go to hell? Wait, I sinned. Oh, I'm going to hell. I better repent. Oh, I'm back to heaven. No, no, I'm going to hell again. I'm going, whoops, I, got, I road rage somebody. Not the road rage anyone. I yelled at somebody. I'm in hell again. I better repent. I hit the horn at somebody. I went to Walmart. I cut someone off. I told someone. I, I, I gave a swear. I, I cursed a little bit. I'm going to hell. I mean, see, that's the life the devil wants you to live. He doesn't want you to believe in his grace. He wants you to be under the law, thinking you're going to go to hell. And guess what happens when that when he's got you there, beloved? Guess what he has? You know what he says, put on the helmet of salvation? That helmet of salvation is no longer on. You know that's one of the six armors? If he can get you to believe you're going to hell, how am I going to cast out a devil if I think I'm going to hell? How am I going to rise up and believe for something for Jesus if I think I can't make it to heaven? How am I going to believe anything for God if I don't think I'm a child of God? That's a lie from the devil. Jesus died for me. I can't run away from him. He loves me too much to let me go. He'll leave the 99, come after me, and he will lay down his life for his sheep. And he will never leave you nor forsake you no matter how far you've gone because you're an overcomer in God's eyes because you accepted the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Amen. And you're more than a conqueror because of it. And then he repeats himself. I'm going to read verse 4. We have victory over the world, by the way. Because you're an overcomer. You know what that means? You can overcome anything. No matter how hard it gets. No matter how much the world comes at you. No matter what stipulations you're dealing with. God says you're an overcomer. If God sees you as an overcomer, you know what you need to do? You need to see yourself as an overcomer. And when you don't make it, you need to get back up and say, this time I'm going to make it. And this time my friends are going to make it. This time my family is going to make it. This time I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep fighting until I get it. How many fighters do we have here today? Now, what does it say? For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Do you know your faith is the key to overcoming? It's not your works. It's your faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. We don't walk by, we don't follow. Works follows faith, by the way. We're not here to work for God. Works don't bring faith. Works follow faith. Can someone say amen? Amen. This is the Bible. Now he says, our faith, the more faith you've got, the more you're going to overcome your obstacles. What can you believe for? You say, I'm getting bad stuff happening. You know why bad things are happening to you right now? You're getting attacked because God's, God's allowing it. He could stop it, but he's allowing it to happen. Why? Because your faith is being tested. Your faith is being tested. When something wrong happens, I don't look at it as, oh, I guess this isn't going to work. You know, I had the first thing I had said when my hamstring blew at mile 17, I had to qualify. I was going to, I was crushing the race, by the way. I, was, I think my best run ever. I was looking at people saying, I got this. Right before it went, like two miles later, it went. First thing somebody said, oh, I guess that's not God's will. You're out. It's over. Yep. It didn't work out for you, so you're out. You know, that's the, that's what people do to you when something, when you try for something and it don't work the first time, even though I completed the race, which is still amazing, but if you don't reach your goal the first time, that doesn't mean that it's not God's will. That means you need to get up. That means there's some obstacles you've got to go cross over first. Sometimes God doesn't give something to you easily. Sometimes things are going to be hard. Sometimes things are going to be difficult. Sometimes you're going to get denied a little. Denied here. Denied there. Rejected. Doors shut here. Doors shut there. Rejection. Rejection. Denial. Denial. Trial. Trial. Denial. Denial. Wow, that was a good run. Trial, trial, denial, denial. Rejection, rejection. Direction, direction. Because with rejection comes direction. I'm going to keep going. You say, what are you going to do? April 5th, this time my mind is on set on one thing. You say, well, what if you don't make it? Well, then I don't make it. 
Doesn't mean I'm not going to try. Doesn't mean I'm not going to push. Because you know what? I don't quit. Because I'm an overcomer. And when I'm an overcomer, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I want to tell you the same thing. What is your endeavor today? What are you battling today? What's going on today? you got to start saying, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. It says, what does it say? Your faith will overcome the world. Your faith in Jesus Christ is what makes you an overcomer. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody. Because you place your faith in Jesus, you'll never be blotted out of his book. It is straight from the Bible. It says, no man shall pluck you from my hand or my father's hand. This is the word of God. Somebody's got to teach the truth and expose the lies of the devil. The devil wants you believing you're going to hell and you get this, that, and the other, and you have no faith, and you're gone. No. God says, you're my righteous child. You're a king. You're a priest. You're a my child. I'll never let you out of my hand because I value you so much. And if you have a child or somebody and they walk away from you and you don't hear from them for a while, does that make them not your child anymore? They still have your DNA, don't they? When you get saved, you get God's DNA. And if you step away, you still have the DNA. Can somebody praise him up in here today? Hallelujah. We're his children. And what does it say in Scripture? Who is he that overcomes the world? Verse 5. But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Who is the overcomer? Those who believe in Jesus. Those who are saved. Those who are children of the Most High. He that overcometh. Revelation 3, 5. Let's read it now after we read these verses. He that overcomes will not be blotted out. That means a child of the King. We're going to get some white raiment. We are going to be blessed. And he's going to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Enter thou into the kingdom of God. And we praise him this morning. That's for you. That's for me. That's not for the most perfect Polish Christian, the theologian. No, that's for somebody who called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, thou shalt be saved. And you'll have everlasting life. And you shall never perish. Never perish. Never perish. Because you are an overcomer as has faith to overcome the world. Can we praise him for that? I'm going to give you a few more verses and we're going to close. I just want to give you something else just to, I want to piggyback on this because we need this. We need to be charged up. We need to be believing you're an overcomer. So what can't a Christian do? You can do anything. Nothing is too hard. No mountain is too big for you to climb. The Bible says you say unto this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea. If you have faith, it'll happen. It doesn't say it'll happen instantaneously. You may have some hardships along the way. God's not going to give it to you easily. He wants to see if you really are true. Well, it didn't work. I guess it didn't work this time, so I ain't going to make it. Hamstring blue. Yeah, I'm out. Forget it. I'm gone. Never happen again. Forget it. I'm just a loser. I ain't going to make it. Oh, well, then you ain't going to make it. Or you can say, I don't care what happens. This thing's healed. I'm coming back, and I'm going to tear this thing up because Jesus can do it because he's the one who gave me the passion. He's the one who gave me the desire. He's the one who gave me this thing in my heart that I have, that I'm goal that I'm continuing to go after. I'm not going to capitulate. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to have a woe is me, barely make it mentality, grasshopper mentality. I'm going to rise up, and I'm going to be like King David, and I'm going to take a slingshot, and I'm I'm going to whack the giant Goliath right in the head, and I'm going to take him down, and I'm going to look at him and say, you are under my feet, devil, and I'm going to win that battle because I'm more than an overcomer. I'm more than a conqueror because the Bible says, thanks be to God, that always causes us to triumph through Christ Jesus. That's his word. That's his Bible. I'm preaching it. God wants you to hear it. Get up and get fighting the good fight of faith. Now I want to read just a few more, and I'm going, to, I'm going to close it out. What does it say? What shall we say? This is Romans 3, 31. What shall we say? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Come on now. Are you an overcomer? Are you a true overcomer? Then that means God is for you. And if God's for you, can anything stop you? What dream do you have? Go forward with it. 
If you're a true Christian, you're an overcomer. You're not just an overcomer, you're more than an overcomer. I want to continue reading. Look what it says. It says, he that spared not his son, Jesus, he sacrificed. God gave him on that tree, on that cross, for you. Our sin put him up there. Without our sin, he would have never had to go to the cross, but he had to to save us. Otherwise, we'd be in hell. But we're an overcomer because of what he did on the cross. Because we believed in it, we became overcomers. How good is God? That means we get out of the way. When we say we're overcomers because of the cross, now it means we did nothing. He did everything. Because that's the proper mentality. It wasn't anything I did. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For by grace he is saved through faith. That not of yourself. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Because if I could work my way to heaven and say, I'm an overcomer. Look at me. How great I am. I kept my salvation. Nobody can outserve me. Look at me. I'm radical. I can serve God and like nobody's business. Sounds like pride, don't it? Without him, we can do nothing. He's able to do impossible things for you. It says, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He delivered Jesus up for you. He said, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? He wants to freely give you all things. That sounds like prosperity, don't it? I don't believe in prosperity. Then you're not believing in the Bible. He wishes above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But I teach you true prosperity. Prosperity means you give your life to Jesus and he'll prosper you. you I don't just say he'll just prosper you. Just believe and that's it. And live any way you want. No, you've got to follow the principles in the Bible. Can someone say amen? God wants you blessed. God wants you successful. God wants you highly favored. God wants you rewarded. God wants you, I believe in prosperity, but biblical prosperity. God says, I want to freely give you all things. What are these all things? All things that you desire, that you really want. That's according to his will that you've been praying for, that the Holy Spirit's been showing you. He wants to bless you with it. This is your little old me. Yeah, little old you. What is your job? Believe in him. Start thanking him. Start praising him. Now let's go to verse 3. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is going to ever try to accuse God's elect? Lie about him, slander him, and take him out? Who could do it? The devil is the accuser of the brethren. That's what it means. He's trying to damage you every way possible. But God says, I will cover your back. I will justify you. No matter who is attacking you, don't worry about what they say. I will protect your reputation. I will bless you. I will cover your back. You are covered by my blood. It's not what you did. It's what he did. Amen. Can someone say amen today? No matter what people say about you, you got Jesus. And that's all you need. You say, well, I made mistakes. That doesn't matter. I serve the one who's made none. I may not be perfect, but I'm forgiven. Can we praise him? Verse 34 says, who is, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Why condemn yourself? And who is he that's condemning you? Look at all the things you've done in your life. Look at you. Oh, well, look at you. You're a sinner too. You know what? The more we sin, the greater his grace is. So you know what? You may have been a reckless, wild person in your life. But when Jesus died on the cross, look at all that grace he gave you. He says, who is he that condemns? Who are they? It's Christ that died for you. Yea, rather, that is risen again. Can we say amen that he's risen? Yeah, and he's alive and he's at the right hand of the throne of God. We don't serve a dead God. We serve a living, true God who's watching over you, who's risen from the grave. Who is even at the right hand of God who also make an intercession for us? You know what that means? He's praying for you. He's behind you. He's rooting for you. It's like he's rooting. Go, go, go. You can do it, Candy. You can do it today. You're an overcomer. Yay. Oh, oops. Okay, a little bit. I got to get my grace in there. Hold on. Pastor, oops, a little bit more grace. Okay, get going. You got it. Let's do it. He's a cheerleader. He's, he's looking at you saying, you got this. You got this. You're more than a conqueror. You're a true overcomer. You've got my power in you. You can do it. He's like, okay, you can do it today. Well, tomorrow will be a new day. He's always looking at you saying, I'm not looking at your bad news. I'm looking at your good news. 
God loves you. He doesn't hold your sin against you. You're more than a conqueror. He loves you. He's a forgiving God who sees the best in you. That's what it says right here. He's making intercession. It means he's praying. He's helping you. His Holy Spirit trying to say, get on the right path. I got something for you. Now I love this right here. Let's just read it. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? No. Shall distress separate you? No. Persecution? No. Or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. You know what that means? We are going through, we're killed all the day long. That means we are flesh. We're going through trials, tribulations, persecution. We're getting hit with all kinds of tough difficulties. But it doesn't separate us from his love. It says tribulation, anything that comes, nothing can separate you. That means you cannot be blotted out of his book because you're an overcomer. Why? Because Jesus said you were because of his blood. Now here's the title of the series here. Nay, in all things we are what? More than conquerors. The title of the series. Through him that loved us. You're not just a conqueror. You know what a conqueror is? Someone who has the victory. Who defeats an enemy. You're more than a victor. That means you're going to defeat the enemy bigger than you even thought you were going to defeat him. Thousandfold, not just tenfold. You're going to defeat and conquer your enemy to the point where it's going to be so bad that they're going to be scared of you. The enemy ain't going to want anything to do with you anymore because you're not just a conqueror. You're more than a conqueror. Why? Because you have the anointing. You are his child. Don't you want to overcome? How do you become more than a conqueror? Be obedient to God's word. Read his word daily. Pray. Have a relationship with him. Receive his forgiveness. Get rid of the law. Get into the grace. Don't get that law mentality going. You've got to get out of that law thing and get into the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's right. Law is a destructive force. It puts guilt, despair, condemnation. I didn't do enough today. Get that out of your mind. Because you are more than a conqueror. This should stir you up today. I am? Yeah, you are. I don't think so. Because you're, you get the devil telling you you're not. Little old me, I don't, little old you. You wouldn't even believe the power you have in you. If you ever knew what you have, how much power you have, how much authority you have, how much Holy Ghost you have. You says these things I do, ye shall do, and greater than these, Jesus said. The things I do, you shall do. That means you have some power, don't you? You're more than a conqueror. And then what does it say? For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, so if you die, you're not going to separate from God. Isn't that exciting? If you die, you're still going to be with him. You can't be separated. You say, well, I'm getting old. What happens when I die? You'll be with him. Because death can't separate you. You say, I'm afraid of death. Don't be. You're not separated. Because you're not going to die. You're absent from the body is to be present with the Lord because you're more than a conqueror. That means if you're more than a conqueror, that means you're going to go on forever with Jesus. Isn't that exciting? You have an eternal life with Jesus that never ends. <laughs> How good is God? What has he blessed us with? How good is he? This should make you want to praise him even more. It says, I am persuaded that neither life, nor no death, nor life, nor angels, angelic hosts can't get you away from God, nor principalities, that's demonic forces, nor powers, anything powerful, nor things present, anything in this present time, nor things to come in the future, nor height, how high it is, nor depth, nor how wide, or, nor any other creature, any creature, any person, I'm a creature too, by the way, yourself included, shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing can separate you from God, no matter what you try to do, because when you are saved, you are going to never be blotted out because you're an overcomer. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter where you are spiritually, God sees you as his righteous sheep. And you're going to be with him forever. And he's looking for you to be the ambassador to him. And be that true overcomer that God created you to be. Can somebody praise him? I gave you some good scriptures today. And I never like to close this message without giving you a chance to be an overcomer. If you don't know Jesus, you're not an overcomer. You're not more than a conqueror. You're dead in your sin. And if you die without Jesus, you will die. And you will end up separated from him forever. 
If you're saved, nothing can separate you. But if you're not saved, you will be separated forever. And it never, ever, ever ends. Hell is a terrible place. You don't want to even think of going to. Because it's a nightmare. When you die, you don't have any more chances. I'm giving you a chance, a lifeline. You need to repent of your sins and say, I don't want to live in sin no more. I receive Jesus into my heart. I didn't get saved. Repent of your sin. Oh, you're a sinner. You don't want to sin no more. You're sorry. Turn from your sin. Invite Jesus to come into your heart. He died for you. He took all of your sin and put it upon himself. Think of what he had to go through. Sin, he brought it on. He put it on himself. You know who that is? A holy God taking all his sin, all our sin, and putting it on himself on the cross. All you've got to do is cry out to him, and you'll be an overcomer. And you'll never be blotted out of his book. Because all our name, every name is written in the book of life, according to Exodus chapter 32, 32, verse 32 and 33. When you die and you don't have Jesus, you're blotted out. Don't be blotted out. Receive him. Keep your name in that book for all eternity. Can you pray with me today? If you pray and receive Christ, you'll have eternal life. Just say this prayer and mean it in your heart. Just mean it in your heart. And you'll be saved. Let's pray. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins. I'm sorry for my sin. I'm sorry for my sin. Forgive me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Cleanse me. I truly give you my life. Come into my heart. Change me. I surrender. My life to you. I believe you died on the cross. You rose from the dead. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed and meant that prayer, let me know about it. And I will I will talk to you and